How's it going everybody? Gunner here. Uh, I got these bad boys in the mail yesterday. This is the Echo Musky and you might be wondering why there's two of them. So because there's no snow on the ground yet and it's not too miserable outside I thought we'd do an unboxing and a quick kind of like just break down the rod real quick get some get some casts on it and see what we're playing with here. I'm going to do a full review much like the TFO Big Fly, the Sage Payload, the Chippewa River Stick, the Blue Halo Zen Glass. Like all of those that we've done so far, I'll, I'll do it next season in the spring. We'll get both out. We'll spend a lot of time on the water. We'll get these two things dialed in, but let's unbox them. Before we do, I just want to say how, how excited I am for their marketing. I don't know if that makes sense, but a lot of rods, um, especially in this kind of specialty market, it seems like they try to sell you on maybe technology ideas and fit and finish and rolled in America. I mean, these aren't bad things, but f rarely do people educate you on the product and why it's designed the way it is. People don't do that, and I don't understand why. To me, honesty and education is the best sales pitch. That's the best way to get me to buy your product is if I understand your product. And something I had talked about in the Sage Payload video is as at the end of that video, when I gave my final thoughts, I said, I wish Sage would have taken it one of two routes, but it seems like they compromised in the middle. I wanted them to say, hey, this is a compact two hand rod and market it as such. Or I wanted them to shrink the rod, make it shorter, reduce the swing weight and say, no, it's a single hand rod. That's what it's for. And to specialize. The, the payload seemed to do both, but it, it could do both only okay. If they would have chosen one or the other, I think it would have been more successful and more exceptional. And it's not marketed one way or the other. There's no education as to why the handle is designed it is or why the length is what it is. Now, uh, the other thing I'll say about the industry is in specialty rods, they like to do like smaller, they don't make as many, you know, it's not six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, but it's usually like an eight, 10, 12 program as far as rod weights that are available. Um, and I like that. I think seven, nine, 11 is a more useful set than eight, 10, 12, because 12 weights don't have a lot of line available to them. Like the industry like makes every line to 11 weight and then 12 weight, like the amount of line availability is like cut in half. They just don't make a lot of 12 weight lines and a 12 weight's hard to cast single hand. I think you get more out of a nine, 10 or a seven, nine, 11. But anyway, Echo said, we're only going to make one. We're going to make a musky rod and it's only going to be an 11 weight. And I'm like, that's ballsy. I like that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> right? Like don't cater to everything. Don't make an everything rod, make a specialty stick and do it right. Uh, but what that allowed them to do, I don't know if you can see the numbers, but there's a nine foot four inch and there's an eight foot eight inch. Both are 11 weights. How cool is that? That's wicked cool. And so something that the, the gear industry does is when they make their musky rods, they make them in a whole host of lengths, like seven, seven, six, eight, eight, six, nine, nine, six, ten, 10, um, to complement how high off the water is the deck of your boat? How much reach do you need to be able to do your figure eight. And so Echo came out with a 9.4. For those of you who fish big water, you're on a big boat, you're high off the water, and you need that reach to get that eight down there so you're not you know, hurting your back every time you bend over because you're an old man now. <laughs> but the cool thing about the 9.4, and Echo you know, explicitly says it, and that's why I'm so excited, it is a compact two-hand rod. You can single-hand cast it, but it is also a compact two-hander and I think that's cool because they took it they took it there on purpose and then they recognized hey what if we also made an 11 weight that was shorter reduced swing weight dedicated single hand and also for people right because there's two considerations casting style single hand or two hand but also people who are fishing rafts or low profile skiffs like what I have so they came out with an 8-8 eight, eight. That way it's reduced swing weight, less leverage, uh, better for single hand, but you also don't need as much reach in the eight. This is, I think, the one I'm most excited about, but I'm, I'm so stoked to have both of them. I think that's so cool. And something to keep in mind, these are musky specific rods, which means they do have an extended fighting butt. And the thing about the extended fighting butt is if you look at an 8.8, eight, you might not think that's that short or it's gonna reduce the leverage that much compared to a nine footer. 
but you also have to consider the fact that there's about four inches or so of extension happening. So it's really an 8.4, an 8.3. It's a short rod, like it's in that low eight range, not high eight nine, it's in the low eight and I love short rods. But I'll give you one more thing that Echo did in their educational bit, but they specifically addressed this foam foregrip as increased leverage for fighting fish. It also doubles as your two hand hand position for your compact casting. Right? So they're educating you. And I just wanted to give them so much props for that because people make rods, they market rods, they try to sell you on rods, and very rarely is education a part of that process. And I think it's the most important part. So let's build one of these. I want to cast the 8.8. I have an 11 weight Rio outbound short, runs like 465 grains, which is going to pair hopefully pretty much perfect with an 11 weight. So let's get this built. We'll get a few casts in, see what it's like. I will say they got chrome tip top and chrome snakes. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of chrome on musky rods because the industry seems pretty split on, you know, do you run a full sinking line all the time because you're a maniac? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, most musky fishermen are, uh, in which case the full chrome is not the way to go. You will have some pretty beefy, bad, negative wear and tear on chrome if you're fishing a full tungsten line all the time. Um, but for floating intermediate uh, multi-density heads, which I fish a lot of, chrome's not an issue. And something you got to understand is the price point of the rods, the market that they're trying to reach. Uh, componentry, man, that can take a rod from a $300 price point to a $500 price point really quick. Um, that's our feel. That's our balance. The rise reel is pretty light. Feels really good. 8.8. Eight. I am excited about 8.8. Eight. The, the tip is stiff, like, like a fatter, a fat diameter, but it does not seem overbuilt. Even just flexing it in the grass, it seems like it's going to have, it's not going to have that excessively stiff high swing weight on top of the short length. Let's see how, how it casts. I'm going to have a lot of line coil. The outbound short is pretty good down to about 40 degrees, but right now it's about 30 and it does not like 30 that much. <laughs> 30 is not the outbound short's favorite temperature to deal with. So we'll have a coily stiff line, which is not ideal. We're at the, the way bottom window of this line's temperature rating. And I threw on not a real leader. I just threw on six, 12, we'll go back like three. Of just 25. It's just straight 25 pound mono. Uh, and we'll cut it down as necessary if I'm getting whip cracks. We'll just keep her keep her close for a sec. Oh, the swing weight is so low. The swing weight is so low. That's cool. Uh, the swing weight is unbelievably low. <laughs> this is an 11 weight. It should... It should wear you out on a day of casting, really. You should be, you should, you should feel that. And my hands are numb because it's so cold and I, I don't feel nothing. The swing weight on that is unbelievable. Wowzers, wowzers. Echo, this is pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Let's keep it closer. I know not everybody likes the whole distance casting shenanigans. Wow. Yeah, you can definitely tell my straight leader without a fly on it is kind of, it's got a lot of bucking at the end of it. That is so easy to cast. Like so easy to cast. There's no swing weight on that whatsoever. You could, you could cast this rod, this 8.8, which of course is more like an 8.3, 8.4, uh, and you could choke up if you needed to. This is mostly for increased leverage to brace to really bulldog a big fish. I will say I think an 11 weight is the greatest 
all around multi-species, multi-application, saltwater, big game, musky rod that you could own. If you could only own one rod, it would be an 11 weight. For me, to have a rod with a swing weight that low, <laughs> that short, that compact, man, if this was your creaking rod, your weighed stick, it's gonna be more accurate, it's got less leverage. Yes, this is cool. This is a cool rod. I get excited about rods and uh, I, forget, I forget about negativity. I will say the chrome guides are not, not my favorite. That's okay. Um, let's do the two-hander just real quick. Um, but man, that gets like a check plus plus in my box. Handle design's great, feels great. Uh, you know, good durability with your foam and really bracing for fish. This would be a fun rod to get a fish on and really evaluate that. I wonder if you would go up to that for the figure eight. Maybe not, but I will say this is low profile, very low profile so that as you brace this against the flat of your arm, let's do a backhand here. As you brace that, you know, you pull your arm out of the way, you extend the tricep, you know, throwing patterns, you extend the tricep, you pop it real hard. This gives you all of the, the leverage in the world to really put a bend in that rod and without a big bulb here, you won't get any bruising in your forearm. So let me get a backhand in real quick. Thirty degrees and windy, not ideal. Uh, natural point of aim here. Let's get my hips right. It's like golf. You gotta like lay a golf club down and figure out where your hips are pointing. That's better. Just effortless. Just effortless. All right. Be really interesting. I'd like to come back and revisit this when the temperature is warmer. My line will be a little bit happier. Let's look at the 9.4 doubles as a compact two-hander. I want to evaluate single hand real quick and see, you know, how high is the leverage? How much difference is there between the two? And then we'll give it one or two two hands. I'm in a hurry, sorry. I gotta go get my kid from school in about 30 minutes <laughs> and I gotta feed a baby before we go. So I guess my kid can, you know, I can be five minutes late in the pickup line, but that's why I'm racing around like a madman. They do have alignment dots, which I like. It's one of those like, does it make a difference? Absolutely not. <laughs> but it is easy to get everything lined up and double checked. Nine foot, four inch, 11. Oh yeah. All right, let's see what we got for swing weight here. I'll rip the full line off, but we'll, we'll stick to like 30 feet, 40 feet for a sec. I will say it fits the 11 grain fly line window very nice. This outbound short is loading it exceptionally well, which is one of the issues you get if you get into what is serving as a compact two-hand rod is a lot of times they're kind of like in a switch line class where it's a 10 weight or an 11 weight, but it really needs like a 600, 650, <laughs> 675 grain line. This feels exceptionally well with just an 11 weight outbound short. Um, there's our line coil issues here. And the swing weight's not that high. Um, this rod is, it's handling this line really well. I'd be really interested to get a really big fly on it. The tip seems a little bit softer than the 8.8. 8. 
but it's it's the swing weight is not as high as I would have thought for a nine foot four. You could single hand cast this very well. A lot of reserve to it. That wasn't a very fast or harsh stroke. Let me see if I can, now that the wind's not whipping me, we'll get like a low big arc, long stroke, bigger arc. You can see it's, it's handling that really well, which is kind of a fun, I like that casting style. It's not so tight and compact. Um, let's see how it does with a much more, yeah, there's a tailing loop. So it's not like an ultra fast stick. It, it wants to be opened up a little, little bit of play, little bit of play. If you, if you keep it too tight, it's, it's more of a moderate fast, more of a moderate fast, which I like. That's my preference anyway. It's probably why the swing weight's not crazy. <laughs> if you got like an ultra fast stick that was stiff, I don't think I'd enjoy that. It's more of a moderate fast. Let's do a two-handed. I'm gonna choke up on this foam section. We're gonna use this essentially as a switch rod. Well, that was fairly effortless. <laughs> I'm not a, a two-handed aficionado by any means, especially for overhead. Um, and when we do a full review on this, I will wanna spend some time on the water So that's just a quick look at the Echo Muskie 11 weight, two 11 weights, an 8.8, a 9.4. I am very partial to that 9.4. The swing weight, super, super low. Uh, the, the taper on it, the stiffness of the tip, the kind of casting arc fits me very, very well. No swing weight. I can't, get, I can't stop saying that. I can't, it's, it's very surprising to find an 11 weight that casts that easily. Um, and then that shorter length, it's... More forgiving, it's more accurate. Obviously the longer a lever is, the more error it accentuates. Like if you're not perfect, the tip of the rod is even more unperfect, <laughs> right? Because it's just accentuating your mistakes. A short rod is very forgiving, very accurate, uh, very just easy to cast. And the 9.4, um, I think it's just a hair softer. The tip just seems a hair softer, a little bit more open of a, a stroke um, but man for a compact two-hander that's that's pretty wicked and the single hand casting is not as stiff as I thought it would be so you could definitely if you needed the reach and the figure eight but you're more proficient single hand you could go this route in a heartbeat the the swing weight is not as high as I, I anticipated for 9.4 um, but if you don't need the reach I'm I, I like that 8.8 eight. I do like the 8.8 eight, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna dedicate the 9.4 to two-handing, and I'm going to get good at it. That's the plan for this next year. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was fun, low-key, informal. Uh, just a quick look at these two Echo rods that are pretty exceptional. Dedicated, specialty, no frill, no fuss, musky sticks that are straight to the point, well-educated, well-built, beautiful. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll do a full review, a long one, longer than this. Can you believe it? I know, I just tend to run my mouth and talk. But we'll do a full review uh, next spring on the water with flies. We'll run it through all the different lines. We'll have some fun as the long format videos have been in the past. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.